Most electric car companies out there plan to launch one vehicle at a time. Even mainstream automakers do it. Rolling out one model and then the second sometime down the road is normal. And even then, there are hiccups along the way. Change production dates and launch schedules, concerns over initial production volumes, teething problems, and questions over if the company will meet its production promises. Yet in normal Illinois, electric car startup Rivian seems to be on top of everything. Sure, it did push back planned delivery dates for its first two electric vehicles in the past, partly due to COVID-19 last year and partly due to a change in priorities related to vehicle development, choosing to push ahead with the development on work for a vehicle for Amazon. But this summer, it's also set to do what feels like the seemingly impossible. It's going to begin serial production of three different vehicles this summer. The R1T electric pickup, its sibling, the R1S electric SUV, and that delivery vehicle it designed in collaboration with Amazon. A vehicle that Amazon hopes will spearhead its goals of turning its entire delivery fleet electric. All three vehicles are now in production intent form. The final part of the pre-production process, where final tests are carried out before actual customer vehicles start rolling off the production line. The R1T has proven itself more than capable of handling a gruelling multi-thousand mile trip from the tip of South America to Los Angeles as support vehicles for the almost all-electric long way up adventure with Ewan McGregor and Charlie Borman. Something, by the way, which you totally should watch on Apple TV if you haven't yet. And of course, Amazon is already testing out early delivery vehicles. Yet Rivian keeps surprising us in a good way with more goodies and snippets that we can look forward to for when its vehicles go on sale later this year. And it's doing so while gearing up a production facility that has been dormant for more than six years. Before we discuss the enormity of the tasks ahead, tasks that most startups would simply fail to accomplish, let's note a few of the things that have come out in the last few weeks that we didn't know before. Then I'll tell you why Rivian is in a place that no other startup has been in at this point in its career. To the snippets. This week, thanks to the company CEO RJ Scarringe, we learned that the two rear rows of seats in the triple row Rivian R1S can fold completely flat, even if you have the double layer 180 kilowatt hour max pack optional battery option that can offer upwards of 400 miles, 645 kilometers of range per charge fitted. Triple row seats in large SUVs aren't all that unusual, but a video posted by RJ Scarringe this week shows that both third and second row seats fold completely flat and you've got a completely flat space that's perfect for camping in. And while its sibling, the R1T, will come with an optional gear tunnel kitchen for those who want to camp on the roof or in the bed at the back, the R1S offers completely sealed air-conditioned comfort if you prefer your camping to be a little more glamping. Then there's the expansion of the rapid charging network that Rivian plans to operate, the so-called Rivian Adventure Network. Unlike Tesla, which has its own proprietary supercharger network, Rivian has chose to build its vehicles on the now standard CCS charge system, meaning Rivian owners can use any CCS compatible DC quick charging station. Hint, most DC quick charging sites that aren't Tesla owned and operated these days offer CCS. And in Europe, Tesla uses CCS too, but I don't think Rivian owners could use Tesla superchargers, even if the plugs and sockets are the same. But don't quote me on that. Anyway, because Rivian's network doesn't need to offer complete coverage, it currently is focusing on deploying charging stations at locations where off-road and outdoorsy types might visit. Think national parks, places known for their off-road mountain biking, skiing, or water sports. And as I detailed a few weeks ago on this channel in a news roundup, thanks to a town planning meeting where the matter of a planning permission for the Rivian Adventure Network charging station was discussed, we now know that Rivian's network plans to offer 300 kilowatt DC quick charging as standard. That's quick, and it is going to make Rivian ownership pretty darned easy and a lot of fun. But enough of those surprises. Let's go and look at the challenges that lay ahead for Rivian. There are a lot.
In addition to all of the usual stuff, like getting the R1T, R1S, an Amazon delivery vehicle actually rated for range, tweaked for final handling and performance, and compliance tested for various laws, Rivian has to wake up the normal Illinois production line, a line that has been dormant since the last Mitsubishi Imiev EV rolled off it six years ago. And by the way, in that list, external crash testing wasn't given. That's because Rivian, like other automakers, just has to certify that its vehicles meet the various crash test standards and regulations that exist. It doesn't have to actually put those vehicles through external crash testing in order to be sold. Essentially, as long as it's gone through internal crash tests and can prove that its vehicles are compliant, and we have video proof that that's happened, everything is good, at least in North America. As to the production facility, well, Rivian's been busy hiring and, according to local reports, has actually booked out entire hotels in the area with its staff as they work around the clock to ready production lines for series production green lighting. According to Bloomberg, it's already refitted the Mitsubishi plant with the same kind of robotic production line equipment we've seen in other EV factories. Rivian is effectively going to use the same heavy robotic production line as Tesla does, as far as I can tell. And at the moment, production line validation is taking place. That means making vehicles on the line. And those vehicles won't actually be sold. They'll just be inspected and tested when they roll off the line. And any issues and defects will be diagnosed to help bug fix any problems with either the robotic production line or any of the humans who actually work on the line. For any automaker, this part of the process is hair-raising. But like Tesla before it and Lucid in tandem with it, Rivian is also testing out a brand new production line while also learning how to make cars. And rather than start with just one vehicle, its production line is going to be working on three different models, launching them all at around the same time. That is very insane. And if it can pull it off, also incredibly impressive. The costs associated with the triple vehicle launch are literally eye-watering, and in this case, made possible by two different factors. First, all three vehicles are essentially based on the same underpinning platform. There are a lot of shared components between the R1S and R1T, and underneath the Amazon body, the same is true for the Amazon delivery truck. But what's truly crazy here is that speed at which Rivian is rumoured to be ramping up its production. Tesla's Fremont production line in California spent about two years making just the Tesla Model S before it launched the Tesla Model X. And during those first two years, production volumes weren't super high. Now, Tesla is operating at a theoretical half million or more cars per year, but according to insiders, Rivian is targeting 40,000 vehicles in its first year of production, followed by 300,000 vehicles a year shortly after. You might say that's ambitious, or stupid, or maybe short-sighted, and for most startup companies it would be. But while Tesla launched the Model S with some pretty tightly constrained purse strings, Rivian has the exact opposite problem. It has managed to pull in billions of dollars, more than eight billion at the current time, from a range of different investors on Wall Street, including Fidelity Investments, T. Rowe Price, and D1 Capital Partners. And that's before I even talk about the institutional investments from both Ford and Amazon. Ford had originally planned to work with Rivian on a vehicle that was rumoured to be sold under the Lincoln badge. Sadly, that plan fell through, but some rumours suggest Ford didn't decide to cancel the project because it wasn't sure Rivian could meet the goals, but rather because Rivian already had a lot on its plate. And it does. With a huge amount of money backing the company, three different vehicles to make, and a factory to get up and running in just a few months' time, Rivian is seemingly already running flat out. But that doesn't mean that RJ doesn't have other plans, because he does. For the past few months, Rivian has been rumoured to be eyeing an IPO, its official entry onto the stock market. That's due to happen at the very end of this year. And unlike pretty much every other startup out there, who has entered the stock market through a back door of a reverse merger, Rivian is expected to execute an old-fashioned IPO, just like Tesla did many years ago, and just like Akimoto has done. But what's really shocking is that when Tesla made its IPO back in 2010, it sold its shares at an initial price of $17, raising around $226 million in the process. Its valuation at the time was around $1.7 billion. 
Obviously, that's grown quite a lot. Today, it's worth a whole lot more, more than 670 billion in market cap earlier today when I looked, although that price changes due to fluctuations in the share price. But when it executes its IPO, Rivian is expected to be valued at more than $50 billion. And unlike Lucid, Canu, and various other startup companies that hit the stock market this year and last through a reverse IPO and had similar valuations, Rivian will be doing so with vehicles in production and on the road. Of course, there are a lot of hurdles still ahead. The inevitable teething problems and how Rivian will choose to handle them will do a lot to define the company's future trajectory. How it will expand its production line in the future will also play a part, but Rivian is already said to be looking for and finding land to build a production facility in Europe. And of course, how its vehicles compare to the competition will also come into play. Let's face it, the R1S and R1T aren't exactly affordable vehicles now, are they? But as I've said before, it now looks almost certain that the R1T will be the first mass-produced electric pickup to enter into the marketplace. It's likely going to go head-to-head -head with the Tesla Cybertruck, and head-to-head -head with more mainstream electric options in the near future. The R1S feels more Range Rover than Tesla Model X, and I'm eager to see how it will compare to that luxury British mark. But what about you? What do you think will happen to Rivian this year? And have you been surprised at how it's progressed so far? Leave your comments below. That's it. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.